Hello sewing friends, Deb here, Slap Happy Sewing, bringing you an episode where I am going to talk to you about my efforts to make more of my wardrobe using a, an app. I'm also going to talk to you about some alterations that I'm going to make to clothes that I've already made. And thirdly, oh yes, what, what, what I've made since I last saw you. So let's go on with the show. So first of all, I want to say welcome to any of my new viewers or subscribers. I really appreciate your being here. Really, you are the reason why I keep doing what I'm doing because uh, it's been a bit of a learning journey for me. But I so much enjoy the interaction with you and the thought that actually I might be inspiring or helping someone else. So, so thank you so much for that. Okay, let's get on with it. So those of you who've been watching me for a little while will know that I have been doing a little work, trying to make a bit more of my wardrobe. Now, it seems to me that all of us, we're putting a huge amount of time, energy and effort trying to perfect our skills, improve our fit, get closer to the kind of styles we want to wear. And that's been a, a real journey for me, too. But what I have found is that I have made things that I haven't worn very much. And sometimes I think things are sitting in the wardrobe just simply because I don't know that they're there or I've forgotten about them. Because of course, the time you tend to get dressed dressed to go out is you're often in a hurry and you haven't got time to build outfits. So what I thought was I need to actually do some more work. I guess, I, I guess probably like many in the sewing community, I love clothes and fabric and I want to make the very most of these beautiful things that I've made. So it's not work, it's pleasure, you know, and also for sustainability reasons I think you know it can we can really get on to a tremendous thing of just making more and more and more new clothes and actually not wearing the things that we have made I mean if they didn't work for us it's fine that's fine um, get rid of them but but just having lots and lots of beautiful things languishing in the wardrobe never worn I think kind of defeats the purpose of all this work and energy we put in I've, I've been looking at the idea of capture wardrobes. Now, I don't really like capture wardrobes. I want to have all the clothes that are right for me in the season that I'm in, you know, available to me in my wardrobe. And here in New Zealand, where I live, the seasons, we do have a sort of spring, summer, autumn, winter, but not probably not as extreme as some of you. It's a milder climate overall. In fact, where I live, it's really rather windy and wet rather than cold. What, I, what I've done is sort of broadly speaking, I, I get, I, I have two wardrobes. No, not, I don't two, the other one's a half a wardrobe. The other half of it is my husband's clothes. But basically I take, I take my clothes and I put in, in my wardrobe the clothes that I think I can wear for the next couple of months. And over in the other wardrobe are the clothes that are off season a little bit or I won't I'm not wearing now for some reason and what I've done this summer is I've, I've followed that fairly closely and as the weather's got hotter I realized that I couldn't wear polyester once the weather's warmer so I've put anything polyester that I can definitely wear when it's a bit cooler into the other wardrobe and just kept my cotton clothes in, in my main wardrobe so Having done that, you know, now that I'm working on really a sort of semi-capsule wardrobe, basically the reason for that is just to have the clothes that I can wear in front of me at any given moment. So that I'm just taking that one step further, I saw on YouTube a, an app called Stylebook. Some, some vlogger was talking about it. I'll see if I can link, put some links below about these, this app. And if I can find that original vlogger, I, I will. It wasn't a sewing vlogger, it was another vlogger. So I looked at this app and I thought, you know, that could be just the thing. It would mean that you, you could actually know everything that you've got in your wardrobe in an app and then you could use it to build outfits. And there's also a part of the app where you can get inspiration as well. So I went along and bought the app, which actually just only costs a few dollars. Now, bear in mind, my experience of anything free is usually that there's a lot of advertising involved in it, or they're going to try and push you all the time to pay to buy up the track. So I'm quite happy to pay a few dollars for an app. I don't know what it was, six, seven dollars maybe. Downloaded the app. It 
it is a little bit just watch the video which i'll put below about how to use it but the first task of course is to try and photograph your clothes which is not as easy as well i haven't found it as easy as it as it looks now i think i downloaded the app in december um and i've been sort of working on the the whole thing of photographing my clothes in not not all you know basically just in little sessions here and there i pretty much i think i've got most of them in now but but a few tips for you you will need to have if i just move over i can i can put it up there the if you happen to have such a thing as a flat white board then so much the better what you can see that i used is um a big sheet which i put on the ground now i aim to put as much i tried doing it in natural daylight and it probably does work except that i live in an old house and my windows aren't very large so i put the sheet down and i put put all of the lights that i could find over it around it to try and balance the light now if you're like me and you don't iron your sheets you might want to iron them or at least pull them tight because the the ripples in the sheets will stop the app from working out that it's a flat surface that's the background so anyway you take you, you lay your clothes down you take a photograph of your clothes and then with a bit of luck if you've got the contrast and the lighting if you get it if you get it right you shouldn't need to do much cleaning up of the photos how fussy you're going to be about about these photos is really up to you um i wasn't overly fussy basically i can pretty much recognize all of my clothes and um there are there is a place underneath where you can sort of put the colors and things in i have done it to quite a few of my clothes but i got bored with it after a while and i thought i don't know what this is for you can always go back into the record and add colors and and so forth that might be for searching i'm not sure but i don't think i have that many clothes or don't know what they are that i would need to worry about that but i'll let you know if that if that wasn't true so i've got most of my summer wardrobe mostly in it um so everything that's in my actual wardrobe at the moment and also in my drawers which is sort of all the basic stuff like t-shirts long sleeves t-shirts leggings blah 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 um as i bring clothes in from the other wardrobe and from this large suitcase that i've got that's got all my winter clothes i will photograph them as i bring them in now the good side of that the bad side of that is that that is oh it is a bit of work the good side of that is that it does make you really review all your clothes i mean this is getting truly intentional about the clothes that you're wearing which is probably you know for sustainability reasons that's where we need to be we don't need we don't need 80 dresses that we're not wearing we need five dresses that we love and wear I have only got just so far with it, but I'll show you here how you make an outfit. You, you can get inspiration and then you can make an outfit. But what I like is that what's good is taking a photograph of yourself in, in an outfit that, that you've made and you like, and then putting the clothes there that go with that. Um, because really at the end of the day, it what matters is that it, you feel good in it and, and you like it. Not It doesn't matter what other people think. Um, looking at kind of very slender models doesn't give me oh, nothing wrong i mean we're all we're all built the way that we're built but it doesn't help me really see how things are going to look on me that's as far as i've got with it at the moment basically i've got most of my summer wardrobe into it i think pretty much all of it and i'm going to play with it now and see if i can build some outfits and it, when i come up with some outfits that i really like because so much of my summer wardrobe is now me made i'll share it with you now as part of as part of this reviewing i found these clothes that I haven't been wearing. But um, these are the things, this pile here, are clothes that I haven't really been wearing very often because there's, there's something about them that I don't like. So this pink blouse, if you remember this one, um, the thing I don't like about this blouse is it's three quarters, it's got a kind of, um, what do you call it, like a bishop sleeve, but it only three quarters. So I just find that very, very irritating. I don't actually mind three quarters sleeves, but what I've discovered by wearing this is I don't like a three quarter sleeve that's got elastic on the three quarter. 
and I do think this blouse would be much better as a foot as a long sleeve blouse so what I'm going to do is take the elastic off I have got some some more fabric and try and make a big deep cuff to go with this and wear this in the winter then then I've got this one this is um this, I love this top this is a ready to wear top I love all the embroidery it's totally my style I love this color but the problem with this top is it's a tad snug in the bust it fits me beautifully except the bust is just a bit snug and makes me feel a little self-conscious that it's you know holding on to me so I looked at the side seams and I wondered if I could maybe do something with the side seams unpick them maybe add a little bit of fabric I might it might be enough sometimes I find that if you unpick the side seam of a garment that's under the arm there if you unpick that side seam do you see there and you re-sew it right up against the overlocking you you would gain enough just to give you that little tad bit more ease probably a centimeter if you did both sides more ease so I'm going to give that a go because I'm not wearing that because I feel that you know when I wear it it's kind of the it can my back fat shows so I'll see if I can change that one this one's got the same problem it's it's just a bit too snug in the bust fits me lovely everywhere I really like the colors of this so I'm gonna have a go with that now I'm telling you this so that I do it so I get on and do it so by the next well hopefully by next episode I will have made these changes now this blouse I really love this blouse but it's actually bags out a bit in the back neck and it's also a bit because I suppose I don't know what this fabric is with what would you call it poplin or something it's a bit sort of straight up and down so what I might do is just shape the side seams a little bit and it's got I don't know if it originally had a back seam but it's got one anyway I might have done that to save fabric but what I can do is take this back seam out and I maybe can shape you know take a little bit of fabric out of the small of the back and also take a bit out of the neck to try and make it sit a bit better and be a little bit more flattering there's this dress I have worn this this summer but what I'm finding with this dress is I made this, I'm not sure when I made this, maybe 2017. It's it's actually a little bit big on me now and would probably look a lot better if I was able to take the side seams in. What well, probably won't be an easy task because it's got a fully lined bodice, but um, I think I can fiddle around with it and take it in a bit and it will be a li little bit more flattering. And the last thing is this cardigan. I love this, now this cardigan. Now I love this cardigan. It's uh, it's very nice. It's got kind of almost like candle wick fabric. It's really, really funny. I mean, obviously absolutely everything I make practically is charity shop fabric. This was charity shop fabric. But the thing I should have taken into account is it doesn't have barely any stretch. And because of that, the sleeves are a little bit snug on me. Now, usually, you know, I usually carry all my my fat in, in, in the middle of me. I don't particularly have chubby arms, but this is too snug. And I think I've just realized when I was looking at it that I could, there is a little bit there, and I could actually take that seam out under the arms, which is a single seam. So I could take it from the, from where the skirt goes and take it and unpick it all the way up to maybe the middle of the arm and then just take it right in so that it's right against the overlocking and I have found that it might not seem like you would gain much but sometimes you know if you gain a centimeter that makes all the difference to how wearable the garment is so I am going to try that I think it I think it might make it just the difference because as I say I just feel like the arms are a little bit snug so that's what I shall be doing and I will show you the results next thing I'm going to show you is what I made since I last saw you including the t-shirt that I'm wearing just want to show you 
some stuff that I've made out of a great big bolt of jersey fabric that I bought in a charity store. Now, I have had this for a few years at this point, and I'm not sure how much fabric was on the bolt, but I think it was probably at least 12, 13 metres. Um, it's not the best quality jersey, but it is soft and comfortable. And uh, I knew that I'd use it sometime. But what I was finding was every time I was trying to store my fabrics, this thing took up so much space. In the end, I thought, you know what? Just go and cut it all out into something. And I've just finished making all the garments. So I'll just show you what they are. So here we have a cashmere Concord t-shirt. Um, actually, I don't didn't find this sewed up very well on my machine. It was inclined to sort of stretch it out when it was, which my machine does a lot. If you've got any tips about that, let me know. So that's the cashmere Concord t-shirt. Oh no, I made this, uh, you would have seen me in this a couple of weeks ago. So I made that, which is a, oh, I'll put it up on the screen, I can't remember what it's called. Um, yeah, so that's like a sort of tunic style dress. And that one is a Love Notions, oh, I'll put that on the screen, it's like a t-shirt dress. So... I made that now this this one and this one my th thinking about these is they're not exactly my colors I'll probably wear them at home if not I can wear them as nighties I am actually my nighties are getting a bit old so I can use them as nighties if need be so that's a t-shirt dress and then uh, there's this one which I made years ago this when I first had it it's interesting because when you look at the color it's actually from being washed and washed it's lightened and brightened a little bit actually it's got a, almost a purpley tone um just taking that out of the drawer that's why it's a bit creased so that was a long sleeve cashmere at pembroke top and the last bit is this which i used just to make the this was made out of scraps and this was uh i've worn this quite a bit actually um but i i used the blue to pick up the blue here so yeah, all I can say is I'm glad I've used it all and made and and I'm sure I I will wear it all. As I say, those if there's too many dresses there, I'll just use them as night nighties. But uh, yeah, just thought I want to show you that. Lastly, I just wanted to to just mention some other vloggers I've been watching and they've made some interesting videos, got some interesting things going on. One of them is Penguin and Pear. She made an interesting video about what it what it is to be a pattern tester. Now, I have never aspired to do pattern testing, mainly because I, I don't sew that fast and really I don't need deadlines in, in my home life or in my hobby. Um, so, yeah. But what I didn't realise is that basically people do all this work making these garments and sometimes all they get is a free pattern. Other times they might get the fabric sent to them. But there's... There's not only making the garment, it's giving all the feedback. And of course, you're making it out of the packet, which for me, I, I almost never can make garments out of a packet unless they're cashmere And even cashmere ones, I have to lengthen. So, um, yeah, it's quite interesting, the ins and outs of it. I'll link these vloggers down below. The other one is How's More Sewing. She has got an Instagram challenge. I have got an Instagram account, but I hardly ever use it. So I'm going to try and make change that i just hate all that scrolling um but she's got a hashtag called sew your colors and um she directed you to go to download a free app actually and despite what i've said about apps this free app doesn't isn't full of advertising as far as i can see but you can basically take a picture of yourself in in good good natural light and uh it should be able to pick out whether you're uh what you know what what color family your skin and hair and all tones work best for you well i kind of always knew i was in autumn because uh back in the old color me beautiful days remember those days um i got a book out of the library once and it said if you've got red hair and brown eyes i used to have red hair um and brown eyes you're you're an autumn and it's been quite interesting. I was talking about this with a couple of my colleagues and um, I said, you know, I'd always thought of myself as pale skin, but when you put my skin up next to others, you'll actually see what a yellow undertone it's got. 
and that's what makes those those warm autumn colours work really well for me. Having said that, you know, as as I say, I sew largely from secondhand fabric, um, and I I am not going to, to use that as a prison to sort of keep myself within that I can only make things in my colours. Um, you know, it's a bit like fashion. Fashion's fun. I just treat it as I like to see the new stuff coming through. There is actually a New Zealand vlogger. She's she's from New Zealand, but when she talks, you wouldn't know it because I think she might have an Australian accent, kind of following the Northern Hemisphere trends. But uh, I do actually like her vlogs and I'll link them below. I think it's called The Style Insider. Um, but, you know, I, I treat fashion anyway. By the time fashion gets to us, it's already been diluted right down because mostly it's coming from the other hemisphere and we're always a season behind and uh, to the extent that often our com we have companies here that literally take the clothes that didn't sell in the last season in the northern hemisphere and sell them cheaply here for for our so so you know your winter clothes will arrive in autumn for, for us to buy here on some like grab ones type sites yeah and even some of the big sites they buy like easy buy buys clothes from next which is last season's clothes i think it's kind of funny really but what i'm trying to say is we that fashion is very very diluted by the time it gets to me i live in provincial new zealand and i don't think there's anything more than a little nod to fashion now and then and the main trends maybe filter through over the years but you don't get these really sort of in the now type dressing you probably might do in wellington i suppose there's probably some people very fashion forward people in wellington anyway i don't really mind about that the only thing i'm interested in fashion in is to get more inspiration i don't really care whether i'm in fashion or not i think um you know when i talked about getting my style guidelines from the everyday style course i still think about my style guidelines which are boho English country authentic basically if I've got two of out of those three I know I'm going to like it and wear it so I'll, I'll put the link to that down below as well in case you're new to me so yeah um I think sew your colors is a great challenge I think you know making things in your color family is well worth a try but don't get boxed into it but Hales has got this as a hashtag on Instagram and I think they're I'm not sure if it's a competition or not and lastly oh we we will have coming up soon uh, it's not frugal frocks this year what is it it's um so frugal 22 that's what it is so frugal 22 and that's run by uh sam from frugalissima and ruan from hmm, i don't know what her channel is but i'll put it down but anyway that's that's the challenge that's going on on instagram which i hardly use but i will i'm taking part in that challenge and i will definitely make something for that so I, my little mind is whizzing around um so yeah but i do rec recommend you go to sam's channel Fr frugalissima for free patterns because some of the patterns that she mentions are not things i would come across in my ordinary life right I think I've rambled for long enough. Uh, please, everyone, do have a happy, safe and wonderful sewing week. And I will see you again next time. Bye.